What's up everybody? It's the Common Sense Investor coming at you with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about Citigroup closing down their municipal underwriting and their market making units, alright? Because I'm already starting to see some of the videos come out by YouTubers and how it's just so intriguing and it's so intriguing and isn't that interesting and what do you think this means? I'm going to tell you what it means. It means there's going to be fewer jobs on the market now. All right, because see, what most people don't understand is what a municipal bond is. Citigroup loaning money to a local government to fund their projects is closing down, you can say. It's tightening up the political donations that they can give to a city, like, say, San Francisco, to build a train station or whatever the fuck they call that. Uh, that they ride on the road, all right? They're not going to get the funds for that no more. That means nobody's going to be building that. That means nobody's going to be riding it, and that means the economy is going to go further and further in the tank. So, I mean, I know it's good sometimes that we want to feel that we can cheer on that the big dogs is finally getting their day and that Citigroup is losing all this money and that they're going to go under. Well, understand when Citigroup goes under, when Fidelity goes under, and when the rest of these son of a bitches start going under because of what they've done, we all suffer as well. I know we like to holler that there needs to be accountability, but let me share something with you people about how I feel, okay? A crook is going to be a crook. That's what the fuck he is. And Citigroup and the rest of them, the, the ones that shall not be named, all right? They're going to be crooks. That's what they do. They've done it since the fucking beginning, all right? But who I hold at fault? is the regulators who were supposed to be overseeing this. And let me tell you something. If anybody deserves to go to jail, it's the regulators for sitting on their ass and think I forgot about the SEC was watching porn for eight hours on their fucking computers instead of regulating this market. They're the ones to blame. They're the ones to blame. Now, a criminal has to be brought to justice and, and crimes have to be paid for. But we also need to lay the blame for who's at fault at the feet of the person who's guilty. And that would be Gary Gensler and FINRA for not doing their jobs. All right? And that's just how I feel about it, people. I'm not happy to see the city group is fixing to go under. Uh, I'm fuck. I'm trying to get about seven hundred fifty billion of it out of myself for all of us. All right, so I'm working on that too. I don't want them to crash until we get our money. All right, and it's talking about the lawsuit. I'm working on it a little bit at a time. I'm trying to pace myself. I'm waiting till the twenty first for when I get paid by YouTube, and I can go buy ink and paper and stuff like that. I need to print out the things I need and get everything in the right order that it needs to be in. That's what I'm waiting on to do there. In the meantime, I'm working on the ebook. And boy, do I have a treat for y'all. I'm giving away the first three chapters that'll be in my next video that I'm fixing to put up. You can sign up right now. You can go read the first three chapters of Boardroom Portrayal. A story of corruption and greed about Adam Aaron, Citigroup, and Citadel, and Virtue, and all of them are all in this book, all right? But here's the treat for you. I'm also making it an audio book, and here is a section of it real quick. I'll lead out with that, and then I'll see you in the next video. Love y'all. Be blessed. Chapter 1. The Rise of AMC. In the heart of Kansas City, where the story of AMC began, the iconic movie theater stood as a testament to a legacy built over decades. Once a single-screen theater, AMC had grown into a global cinema empire, pioneering experiences that define. But now, in the bustling headquarters, where executives once busily charted the company's future, an air of unease hung beneath the surface of strategic plans and financial forecasts. The global market was shifting, and streaming services were emerging as formidable contenders. In one of AMC's premier theaters, away from the patrons, Sarah, a longtime employee, and Mike, a recent hire, 
shared a moment of quiet conversation. Have you heard the rumors about all the closures? Sarah asked, her voice low. Mike's face grew tense. Yeah, I've heard. My cousin's theater in New York might close too. And with my aunt sick, we really need the income. It's all happening so fast. Sarah nodded in understanding, her eyes reflecting the shared worry of thousands across the country.